Hi everybody, today I will teach you how to read a legal contract. Hi, I'm Dafan, the Professor Z, your real life homeless to Ivy League professor, attorney, and serial entrepreneur. In the last video, I talked about the concept of legal contract. And in this video, we'll actually look at a contract that I use for myself and see what's in a legal contract. As many of you know, I work as a consultant quite a bit. I work for small and mid-sized businesses solving their everyday problems by providing business and legal advice. So for each of the company I work with, I have a consulting agreement. And this is an example of the consulting agreement I have with the company. I changed the name of the company for confidentiality reasons, but the contract is the one that I used. This is a fairly short contract. Many of the contracts I worked on are hundreds of pages long, if not longer. But not all contracts have to be very long. It just has to contain certain parts that are necessary to convey the agreement between the parties. And let's look at this one and see what's in it. As you can see, this contract contains a title, the consultant agreement. It also has number sections, one, two, all the way down to section 11. But before we get to section one, we have three paragraphs up here. This is what I call the preamble or the heading section. This sets forth the parties and the background to the contract. Here you can see one of the parties is me, the other party is the company. As you can see, I made the text bold so it's easier to read, but not all contracts will do that. It also set forth the date of the contract. Here I put down April 1st, 2020. As I sit here, it's not April 1st, 2020 yet. So we can enter into a contract in the future. Many times when we sign a form, we date the date we sign it because we think the date is the day that it became effective. That's not always the case in legal contracts. The effective date can be separately set forth. This effective date can be in the past, can be in the present, and can be in the future. So what's really important is the effective date. As you can see here, April 1st is set forth as the effective day. And this is the day the contract begins. Right underneath it, behind whereas, we set forth the background of this contract. This background explains what the contract is for and helps people understand the terms contained within. And right before the terms section, we have, in consideration of the mutual covenants and agreements contained within, the receipt and sufficiency of which are hereby acknowledged, the company and consultant agrees as follows. The operative word here is consideration. In a different video, I explained the concept of consideration to a contract. Every contract must have consideration attached to the agreement or it's invalid. So here, we're explaining what the consideration to this contract is. The first three or four sections of the contract is usually the most important. That's why I put it in the front. How many times you receive the document that's multiple pages, but you only look at the first and the last page? That's why we put it up front. First, we explain what the services the consultant will provide. Here, it states out that the consultant will provide consultant services. In section two, it further spells out the duties of the consultant. You can read through this. I think it's really good practice to set forth, like I did down here, the actual scope of the services. So for example, I put here that the consultant will advise company on routine business and legal matters, but the advisement does not include any legal representation of the company or formation of any agency relationship. This way, there's no ambiguity of what's included and what's not included in the contract. And immediately after that, we have the term section. Term tells the parties how long the agreement will last for. And in this case, it's period of one year. It further says that term may be extended for subsequent terms upon the mutual agreement of the company and the consultant. So under this clause right here, the contract is good for one year, but both sides can agree to extend it further. Some contracts have auto renew terms, which means the contract will automatically renew unless you tell each other that the contract will be terminated. So be careful with auto renew terms. If you miss the date, if you didn't provide notice, the contract will renew and you will either have to pay or be paid for another term. And underneath term is the compensation section. Here we set forth that the monthly service fee is $1,000. The payment must be made monthly within 10 days of receiving an accurate invoice. If you don't put the payment terms in, rather you only include the monthly fee of $1,000, there might be a dispute later on as to when that money is due. So it's always important to put in some sort of procedure explanation of when the payment is due. 
Now we move on to the second page. Termination is still an important clause. That's why it's at the top. Here it says the company may at its sole discretion terminate this agreement at any time for good cause shown. This might be a simple sentence, but it packs a lot of information. I will do a future video on this and other essential terms. And underneath section six, confidential information, section seven, independent contractor, and section eight, consultant services to others. These are other terms, which I call them non-essential. I call them non-essential because the contract will still stand and we can still have an agreement without them. But having them clarifies the relationship and some of the other issues that may arise in the future. But we put them later on because they are not necessarily required. It's just good for clarification's sake. A lot of these clauses are written in legalese, meaning lawyers write them and lawyers read them. So if you're a lay person, if you're not a lawyer, you might have a tough time understanding the exact meaning of these clauses. So if you ever have a question about the contract presented to you, you want to consult an actual business attorney. Let them read through the contract so they can give you advice as to the meaning of these clauses and whether or not they're good for you. The last section on the contract is usually the miscellaneous section. Although this is called miscellaneous section, it's equally important. As a matter of fact, this might be more important than many of the non-essential clauses that we had before. I'll do a future video looking specifically at these miscellaneous sections and what you need to look out for. At the end of the contract, we have the signatures page. As you can see here, both parties are listed and they're expected to be signed. Missing here is the date field. As I said before, because this contract has an effective date, then we don't need to include the date of signing on this contract. But without the effective date listed in the beginning, then the date of signing by all the parties might be the day the contract become effective. So to avoid confusion and other issues, we generally put the effective date in the body of the contract instead of relying on the date of signing. There is actually an important lesson here on how to sign this page and what to sign. We'll do a future video on that topic. So there you have it. This is a simple three page contract that we just went through. It's simple, but it covers most of the essential and non-essential terms that's necessary to make this contract work. Although it's simple, but it packs a lot of information, which may be very critical if there's a dispute later on regarding this contract. I highly recommend when you're presented with a contract before you sign it, consult a business attorney to read through it so they can answer any questions so you know what you're getting into. Because hidden in those clauses on the second and third page might be something that you will never agree to, but if you don't catch it, or if you don't understand what it means, you will not know what you're signing and you will be bound by it later on. Until next time, this is the founder, Professor Z, helping you on your journey to success, freedom, and satisfaction. Until next time, be successful.